Ooh, that is a bit tasty. Music's so good as well. Hey guys, I'm Tom on Tech Chat, and this is the new ASUS ROG Strix SCAR 17 SE. And this is ASUS's biggest, baddest, and highest performance laptop for the most demanding gamers and esports professionals. And it's like the regular 2022 Strix SCAR 17, but even faster. This is the SE, and it's just about the most powerful gaming laptop you can buy, and suddenly it's the fastest I've ever tested. So if you want an incredible gaming laptop and have very, very deep pockets, and you're also not a fan of video calls, because there isn't a webcam, definitely check this out. Okay, let's get the specs out of the way first. And for starters, we're looking at a 12th gen i9-12950HX, which is Intel's super high-end 16-core, 24-thread CPU, with an additional overclock from 5 up to 5.2 gigahertz. Pair that with up to an RTX 3080 Ti, which can boost up to a 40% higher max TGP than the regular SCAR 17, and you're looking at a bit of a monster. And then with either a 360 Hertz Full HD, or in this case, a 240 Hz Quad HD 17 inch screen, up to 64 gigs of DDR5 RAM, Wi-Fi 6E, and also in this RAID 0 setup, four terabytes of the fastest storage I've ever seen on a laptop. It is, however, four grand for the top spec one. A little bit ridiculous, but you are paying for that cutting edge performance, those extra few percent uh, that you're gonna get with the SE over the regular, already incredibly powerful SCAR uh, 17. The SE is just that little bit more, and that's what you're always gonna be paying a premium for. Now, of course, with great power comes great heat. Uh, and so to maintain chill, which is actually something I even I struggle with, ASUS have added an all new, much bigger vapor chamber cooling system, which uses the snappily named Conductonaut Extreme Liquid Metal, which ASUS reckon will drop the GPU temps by around 15 degrees Celsius versus regular old thermal paste. And all this helps deal with either the CPU or the GPU drawing the full 175 watts, which is the absolute max power draw that both Intel and Nvidia actually allow. Although in practice, the system balances power between them. So in graphically demanding games, which you'll probably be playing on this, you'll most likely end up with a 35 to 55 watt CPU and then a GPU between 150 and 175 watts. And it all comes together to give me the highest scores I've ever recorded in some of my benchmarks. But we'll come back to that first. Let's talk about the design. There is no doubt this is a gaming laptop. And also the lack of aluminium or an alloy in the materials perhaps makes it feel a little bit less premium than, uh, I don't know, MacBook Pro or something. But those materials would probably add to the already considerable three kilogram weight. And by going with plastic, we get this neat little translucent keyboard effect. It's not ridiculously heavy for a 17.3 inch laptop, and I think it looks pretty smart for a gaming laptop, although it does pick up smudges quite easily. There's all the RGB you could ask for on the keyboard, along the front edge and the side, and in the logo on the lid. And actually, it took me a while to notice this, but there's also a strip of it along the bottom of the lid, which shines down onto the keyboard deck. And as usual, all this is customizable via Aura in the Armory app. And if you were thinking, hey, Tom, that's a good looking laptop there, but it's just missing that something. I can't put my finger on it. Well, ASUS have been listening and they've added this invisible ink design on the lid, which you can just about make out if the light hits it, but really you're gonna wanna shine the UV black light that ASUS bundles with the laptop for a proper look at this invisible ink cybertext, as ASUS calls it. And apparently these shapes take their design from ASUS's free Scar Runner parkour game. This is why I love ASUS. They spend six months developing something that you're not gonna see unless you shine a black light on it that you might do a couple of times and then never again. But why not? It's fun. Never change, ASUS. Okay, more importantly, picking a screen. As I say, you've got two options, either a Full HD 300 Hertz or this one, which is QHD 240. And I reckon unless you're an eSportist person, then the QHD is my pick, as it strikes a better balance between image quality and smooth gameplay. Both are IPS panels, both have adaptive sync and are 16 by nine. I would have probably preferred a slimmer bottom bezel to accommodate a taller 16 by 10 screen. And also there's no mini LED or OLED option here. It is still obviously very good for gaming, thanks mostly to the big size and that three millisecond response time. Contrast and color do suffer a little bit if you sit off center. And also at 325 nits, it's not the brightest screen I've ever seen. Although color accuracy is pretty good, especially the 98.5% P3 score that I measured. 
As for connectivity, well, we, uh, that was a bit dangerous considering this was foreground, chucking it around like that. Uh, we get Wi-Fi 6E, but if you are a serious gamer, you're probably gonna wanna have a uh, wired internet via the RJ45 port on the back. And that sits alongside an HDMI 2.1 port. We've got two type C's, the left side has a couple of USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A's. We really need a better naming system for this. And the right hand side simply gets ASUS's Keystone slot, which is a little device sold separately that stores your ASUS preferences and can also unlock your encrypted drives. Absolutely gargantuan keyboard here with room uh, for a numpad, which is great if you fancy doing your accounts afterwards, or well, more likely a stunning macros if you fancy. Really lovely keyboard, excellent key travel, and lovely precision touchpad down here. Could be a little bit bigger, that touchpad. Certainly we've got a lot of space not really being used down here. And of course it goes without saying, you've got per key RGB backlighting as well. The lack of a fingerprint sensor does feel like a bit of an oversight at this price, especially as there's no chance of face unlocking because we haven't got a webcam. What we do get though is a MUX switch. You can toggle this within the Armory Create app and it lets you disable the integrated graphics, giving you a performance increase in games at the expense of worse battery life. In terms of performance modes, we get silence, performance, and turbo, with each dialing up the CPU and GPU power envelope along with the fan noise. Okay, enough waffling, let's test some games. And first things first, let's plug it in, that helps, because that way you can unlock the turbo mode. Starting in Halo Infinite, on Ultra, of course, the SE averaged 100 FPS at Quad HD and 120 FPS at Full HD which is a great start, although you'll probably want to drop some settings uh, to max out that 240Hz screen. In Forza Horizon 5, again on Ultra, I managed 100 FPS at QHD and 106 FPS at Full HD, showing that the GPU doesn't really matter quite as much in this game, and that also Forza's not particularly well optimized. Speaking of questionably optimized, uh, in Flight Sim, I got 75 FPS at QHD in the Top Gun Maverick Challenge, and 84 FPS at Full HD, Again, these are the highest results I've ever seen out of a gaming laptop, although this game needs a DLSS option. In Fortnite, I averaged 170 FPS at Full HD with Epic settings and also DLSS set to performance. And then jumping up to Quad HD, I was averaging 150 FPS, which I reckon offers a better balance between performance and image quality. And lastly, in Rainbow Six Siege, the 17SE hit a frankly silly 515 FPS at Full HD and 403 at QHD on Ultra, which is kind of overkill for a 240Hz screen. In Time Spy, again, it posted the highest score I've ever had out of a laptop, and it was a similar story in all my synthetic benchmarks. Now, most of the time, the i9-12950HX in here was just slightly faster than the i9-12900K in the Lenovo Legion 7i I tested recently, but in the Cinebench multi-core test, it completely demolished it. But to tell you the truth, that's not even the most impressive part. The cooling system in here is phenomenal. Even at the 175 watt GPU, 55 watt CPU, rock solid for a good 10, 15 minutes. CPU clock speeds seem to plateau at around 1.9 gigahertz under serious load, but in games, it happily ran at 4.2 most of the time. And in all my tests, the GPU maintained a healthy 1.3 gigahertz clock speed no matter what. Temperatures peaked in the low 80s under load, which is pretty good, although some patches of the keyboard did get quite warm. And seriously, the amount of hot air coming out of the side vents is unreal, although I guess better out than in. The laptop does limit fan noise depending on the mode, but even on turbo, it's not actually that loud. And at idle, it's basically silent. Although even a light load will get the fan spinning enough for you to notice. But even so, this is generally quieter than a lot of other gaming laptops. As for battery life, well, it's a gaming laptop. Uh, obviously you do have that MUX switch, which can help actually, because then uh, can use the integrated graphics and stuff that are dedicated uh, when you're doing less intensive stuff. And so actually ASUS claim you'll get up to about 10 hours of video playback from this. Although in my YouTube test at about 200 nits, that was closer to five hours, which isn't the end of the world if you're doing some basic stuff, but really if you're gaming or doing anything more demanding, you're gonna wanna plug it in for performance and so it doesn't die. And speaking of power, we actually have this new, slightly more compact power brick. It is certainly more portable than ones I've seen before, but it's still pretty big. So there really isn't much to complain about with this Strix Scar 17 SE, except for the bloody long name. Also, no webcam, uh, no fingerprint reader, reader uh, and also 
The screen, while obviously it ticks the boxes in terms of uh, refresh rate and resolution, it's not going to blow you away in terms of brightness or the contrast. It is just a regular IPS LCD. But as it stands, this is the most powerful laptop I've ever tested. Certainly one of, if not the most powerful laptop, uh, gaming laptop in the world that you can buy right now if you can afford it. But what do you reckon? Would you save up your pennies for something like this? It might take you a few years. Or is it just overkill? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you want to see more gaming laptop reviews from me, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. And I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Jam.